That's wonderful. Well, that's great. It'll be a lovely, lovely weekend. Yeah. Great. Well, I will see you on Friday, I think. Gosh, it's it's really come around this, isn't it? All this planning and it's nearly over. Well, oh, no, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Well, I'll see you on Friday. Bye for now. Great, well, thanks for coming in. Sorry about the wait just then. Do please have a seat opposite me if you can find any room. It's a slightly smaller office than I'm used to. Um, I've got a few offices scattered about the place to make things a bit easier for face-to-face -face chat. So, my name's Pete and I work for Pondering Castle, which I believe you are hoping to book onto for your stag and hen do weekend. It's really interesting, there are lots of people that do stag and hen do's now combined, so all the boys together, all the girls together. I think it's wonderful. I've only ever organised stag do's, but I think the term for stag and hen is a little bit a little bit rude, but um, I'm discovering more and more people doing this and they're coming over to our castle. Anyway, I'm going on and on and on. We spoke on the phone a couple of days ago, didn't we? I'll just see if I can get your or details up. We didn't speak about much, but you just registered an interest. So, uh, what, what? Remind me of your name. Sorry. Yes, yes. Here we go. So, as I was saying, I work at Pondering Castle, which is a really magical castle that's uh, becoming more and more popular these days with booked groups couples, families, uh, even sort of team building exercises, groups from work. We're seeing a lot of uh, great business at the moment and I'm so glad that you registered your interest with us for this particular weekend, which you said was a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks. So you're coming on the Friday, staying Saturday. Lovely. Well, I didn't mention much on the phone because we were a bit short on time, but we've got this period of time now just to go through everything that we can offer, and I'm sure you're going to have a lovely, lovely time. First of all, would you like a drink of anything? Something hot. <laughs> but you're not being very specific. Okay, okay. I will get you something hot. Just bear with me one moment, and I'll go get a few. This is probably the strangest office I've ever worked in, but it's best for, as I say, face-to-face -face discussions about what we can do at the castle. So while you're enjoying your hot drink, I hope you, uh, I hope you like it. It's a rather interesting recipe. It's basically a combination of coffee and tea and hot chocolate, um, so I hope you like it. If you don't, then uh, please feel free to spit it out. So, let's just go through the various things that we can do for groups at Pondering Castle. So, I'll just get a little document up just to help me with a few things. I've only been doing this for a couple of months, and there are just so many things to offer at the castle. So, Stag and Hendu. How many are there of you? Fourteen. Fourteen. It's wonderful when these groups combine like this. I think the days of having just boys nights out, girls nights out, it's all well and good, but it's just marvellous when you can combine them. It's quite modern, I suppose. And 
over here well at the castle it's a mixture of old and modern as you will find out we've had a lot of interest from similar groups to yours um and i'm confident that we'll look after you very well very well indeed and you'll have lots of fun so i'll just go through a few things with you so first of all you would have seen a few pictures on our website a few images it's a wonderful area it's surrounded by fantastic grounds it's a bit like hogwarts we've had a few people compare it to hogwarts but um we're actually far more magical in many ways so let me just talk you through exactly what we can offer that's starting with the accommodation first of all do you like it it's rather interesting isn't it different taste accommodation wise so We've got a few options, a few different suites. We've got the Fantasy Suite. We've got the Tudor Suite. We've got the Victorian Suite, the Modern Suite, and the Ancient Suite. So, there are plans afoot to expand and create more suites. But this is all we can fit in at the moment to the castle. I think we've got a Viking Suite in the works. That's definitely something afoot. Uh, and I think that's 2022. We're expecting that to be going ahead. So, but at the moment we've got just these suites, so, ah, yes, the Ancient Suite. The Ancient Suite's an interesting one. It's one of our more popular ones among our guests who prefer to have an adventure. Ah, the sort of the backpackers, the hikers, the mountain climbers, those people that love living out in the wild. Ah, I've not tried it myself. But um, as far as I can understand, it's rather minimal in terms of what's provided. So just so that you're aware about that. But since you've shown an interest in it, I'll go through it. So let's just have a little read through of what the ancient suite is. So it's perfect for our guests who require minimal technology and are perfectly happy to make use of our campsite and make bonfires, sleep under the stars, that sort of thing. And I probably wouldn't recommend it in the winter, uh, but we do have some really hardcore adventuring types who do make their beds in the forest and they go fishing in the lake. So if that's the sort of thing that you're after, then do feel free. Not quite, not quite on this occasion. Okay. The suite is mostly outdoors, um, but it's very close to one of the castle entrances um, and we've got a few emergency luxuries for our ancient guests. Uh, ancient in terms of the suite, not in terms of their, their age. So, moving to the Tudor suite. So the Tudor suite gives each guest a four-poster bed in a lavishly decorated Tudor-style room, including really cute, shiny floorboards that creak in the night, and these lovely Tudor-style windows. The rooms come in singles, doubles and in rooms of four single beds or four poster naturally or four poster beds and there's authentic panelling on the walls and lovely rustic beams it's it's truly lovely and all the suites apart from the ancient suite have wi-fi we're quite modern over, over at Pondrick Castle and the rooms also have a mixture of ensuite shower or bathrooms or alternatively, there's a communal washing room nearby. Um, but this can all be sorted out in the form that we'll fill out at the end of this. So, Next, we've got the Victorian suite. Now, it's similar to the Tudor suite. It's got the same bedroom layouts, as I mentioned before. Uh, but there, it's a more distinctly Victorian feel. So lovely, beautiful Victorian fireplaces in each of the rooms. Stained glass decorations, chandeliers. Again, the bathrooms will be similar to that of the Tudor ones. We've kept those pretty modern by request. The fantasy suite is a very popular suite and it has a real magical feel to it. Magical, magical feel. The rooms have a mixture of fantasy decorations to long flowing curtains and tapestries bursting with colour and we've got rooms lit by many floating candles. And I won't give away the secret of the floating candles. We'll leave that to the magic. 
and it's very safe, don't worry about that. And these rooms all have majestic fireplaces, majestic fireplaces. And at Christmas, we naturally make the most magical festive editions. But you won't be coming at Christmas, you'll be coming in a few weeks' time. Now finally, the modern suite. It's really for those wanting a more 21st century hotel suite with electricity, uh, uh, Bluetooth speakers, mirrors, games consoles, and TVs, all at the guest's disposal. And these bathrooms do have Bluetooth speakers built in, so that's a slight difference to all of our other bathrooms that don't have that particular luxury. So, which one do you think your group would like the most? It can be a tricky decision. I'll, um, I'll leave it with you to have a little mull over while I just go through the activities. The activities. I'll make a note, come back to that. And there's actually no rush at the moment. We just need to know, ideally, within a few days. We're quite flexible over here, and we're talking about a couple of weeks. There are a couple of things on the form, such as dietary requirements, medical uh, aspects that you might want to find out from your group uh, as soon as you can, but we'll, we'll get to that later on, later on. So, the activities, the activities. When you arrive at Pondering Castle, you'll be greeted by one of our castle staff. Uh, sometimes I pop along and I welcome groups. Depends where I'm needed, if I'm needed. Uh, I'm still quite new to this. You'll be taken to reception, where you'll be greeted, and you'll receive your welcome packs and room keys. Now, the welcome packs you can keep, take home with you as a memento of your lovely stay. Of course, the room keys are all designed to match the theme of the suite, which is quite cool, as Gandalf once said. And you can either have the castle steward show you around on your arrival, or you can make use of the handbook you'll be issued and show yourselves around. It's entirely up to you. When people stay here, they can either choose to embark on some of our activities and opportunities, or they can simply just enjoy their time at their leisure in their own time. It's, we're flexible. We want to make sure that you have the best time possible, and I really hope that you do. Now, our lake is absolutely gorgeous all year round. It's a fabulous sight, and we offer some boat trips, uh, which can be guided or unguided, or, or both. Essentially the difference is that one option involves you all sitting on a motorboat and you can just simply chill out with some champagne and other drinks and snacks while you take in the views and the sights of the grounds and the castle. Another option is to use some rowing boats that you can hire out and you can take them onto the lake yourselves. There are so many wonderful photo opportunities on I mean, you can do both, as I mentioned. Uh, depends how much time you've got. Uh, and how much time you want to spend on other things. Some people come to the castle and they just lie near the lake on the grass, just sunbathing, just taking in the sights, having picnics, reading books, listening to music. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but next we've got the guided tour of the castle. And this can be done in little chunks and at different times of the day. For example, lots of our visitors have had tours of the castle interior during the day, and at night they come on the tour of the tower. Uh, it's a very tall tower, and they have a look up at the starry sky at night, and it's, it's very romantic, very romantic. We've had quite a few engagements up there, as you can probably imagine. Uh, it's, it's really cute when that happens. How's the drink? All right. So let's have a look. So those are the tours. I'd recommend one of those at least, if not both. So the tours are a really great way to have a little look around the castle, see some of the areas that you can't really see without one of our tour guides. Um, it is possible to just walk around on your own and see the castle and the grounds. Um, with the help of the handbook, 
but it's also really recommended to use one of our expert guides. So I'll let you have a little think about the tours, but they are highly recommended. It's often quite a popular first day activity. Do you like dancing? Yeah. <laughs> there are a couple in your group who are dancers. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, it just so happens that we have a functioning ballroom. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll register your interest because we do have some resident dancing instructors, professional dancers. Um, and one thing that you can do if you do have some keen dancers or people that are keen to learn, is you can have an evening or afternoon with dancing instructors who will help you hone the skills you already have or teach you some new ones. And that's in our lovely ballroom. You can reenact Beauty and the Beast and all those films. Uh, and talking of that, we do have a resident orchestra. Uh, it's got a small, small band. Um, they're always eager to use their musical talents and skills to accompany the dancing. Um, and that's quite a popular thing. Lots of other things are quite popular. And um, it's obviously quite a romantic thing, especially if you've got the bride and groom-to-be who are there. We can book out the ballroom. Uh, so I'm not sure if that would be something that would interest... Yeah, definitely. Okay. I'll make a note of that. Oh, lovely. Oh, you've got some actual professional dancers. Great. <laughs> That's fantastic. What makes my job so great is the amount of great people that I come across and meet. It's, it's really, really lovely to see so many different people coming and booking the castle. And you meet so many great and interesting and inspiring people. Um, and without meaning to sound a bit cheesy and soppy, I think that you make lots of friends in this business. How's the drink? Is it all right? So, we can book you in for the ballroom. I mean, you might not want this, but I'm going to go into it anyway. So, some people who don't really do the traditional style dancing, they prefer to sort of do the dancing that you might do when you're out clubbing, uh, out on the town having a, a lovely time in a nightclub with loud music, with DJs. So we do actually have an underground club uh, that we have. Um, it's positioned rather conveniently underground, as is the nature of an underground club, but it's far enough away from the main accommodation part of the castle, um, and it's all soundproofed. It's remarkable soundproofing, really, but that's not of interest to you. If you want to do dancing anywhere else in the castle, then you can just use a Bluetooth speaker and a phone and just do it wherever you want, in the forest, by the lake, in the grounds, in your bedrooms. Just uh, try not to disturb the other guests. <laughs> Moving on to our next thing, which you might find quite an interesting thing, is our tavern. Our tavern, which is our local pub or bar. Um, but it's it's a very popular destination for lots of our visitors. It's a really, really, really old-fashioned building. Um, and it's possibly closest to the fantasy theme that we've got. It's just lit by candlelight, which is really atmospheric. Um, and all the drinks are served in beautiful, beautifully carved and decorated tankards and cups and glasses and goblets. There's a warm, open fire. Plenty of musical instruments available as well, um, in case you want to have a little jam. Uh, violins, guitars, mandolins, drums, tin whistles, flutes, uh, banjos. Uh, we've got a double bass as well. Obviously just one, because if you had loads of double basses, it would fill up the entire pub. We've also got lots of local musicians who, from time to time, pop in, give a little bit of a, a recital. Uh, we have some folk musicians, we have a male voice choir, we have a female voice choir, we have mixed choirs, we have lots of solo instrumentalists and singers, um, and I think it's really cool when you come in from a winter's walk and you sit by the fire with your, your mead, or your, your ale, or your wine, and you're accompanied by this wonderful, wonderful music. Uh, 
but we make it accessible so that if you're a musician as well, you can just grab an instrument and just play it and show off your skills. Have any instrumentalists or musicians? fingers are calloused from all the playing. So, that's the tavern. Um, what more about the tavern? Um, we also have some bards. Uh, they come and tell stories uh, and all sorts of tales, lots of pondering tales. Um, and this doesn't need to be booked. You don't need to book the tavern. It's, it's, it's very flexible um, in that regard. Um, and it's only really used by the, the guests of the castle and the castle staff. So it won't get too busy. Uh, it's definitely worth a visit, and it closes at 12, 12 midnight every night. So that's quite convenient for lots of people. But just be mindful of other guests, of course, when you're walking back. Because we like to take care of our guests. It's a great pub. I highly recommend it. The drink you should definitely try is the King's Ale. Um, it's one of my favourites. Even if you're not an ale drinker, it's absolutely delicious. Uh, and then you can move on to other drinks too. Now, I should mention that it is a child-friendly pub. Uh, you can have kids. There are lots of soft drinks available as well. And a lot of the flavours are inspired by popular fantasy drinks as well. Uh, you've got some Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Narnia, uh, I think lots of, of drinks from So the last two activities we've got are quite active ones, um, depending on how active you want to be and depending on what you've done the previous night. Excuse me. So we've got horse riding and then we've got bike riding. And both of these take place in our spectacular grounds that surround the castle. Uh, we've got some excellent horse riding instructors, just like the dancing instructors and the orchestras. We've got all sorts of things available. Um, they live at the castle, and they will happily guide you in the art of horse riding. Naturally, you might have some horse riders in your group already. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, the same can be said for the bikes um, that we have on offer. Um, we've got some beautiful forests and groves and the lake, uh, mountains, hills fields, that sort of thing, that are beautiful to explore on foot as well as on bike or on horseback. Uh, we're quite flexible about the timing you can return them, but we need to think about other guests uh, who might be waiting, so it depends. On the day, you'll be able to have a bit of, bit of flexibility and a bit of a chat with the instructors about who's waiting for what. Um, the horses need to have their rest as well, the bikes not so much. Even if none of this takes your fancy, you're free to explore the grounds at your leisure whenever you want, and the castle, certain parts of the castle, not all of them. Now we have to respect the privacy and the mystery, the mystery of the castle. Uh, some mysteries are yet to be uncovered, so perhaps you can uncover some when you come to stay. So, we're getting towards the end of the description of what we've got on offer. Uh, let's talk about dining and food and eating and drinking, all those lovely things. So we've got a lovely restaurant which is open between 7am and 11pm every day. And it's great for sourcing out those meals that you need during the day, whenever you'd like. Uh, we do take bookings for meals in the restaurant, which I'll be happy to go through with you when we fill out the form in a moment. Um, but I'll just talk about the evening meals that are slightly different in terms of their location and their their layout. And they're in the dining hall. So the dining hall is a bit like the Great Hall in, in the Harry Potter world. Huge Great Hall, candlelit, roaring fires, big long tables, that sort of thing. Um, so every evening our guests are invited to join uh, the staff and the other guests who are staying with us in our large and fabulous dining hall. Uh, and it's normally a very sumptuous meal. The types of meal vary depending on the day of the week and the season, uh, but you can expect gracious table service and drinks before and after the meal. Now, there's quite a lot to think about. 
with um, with this booking. But let's start with making up a little form, and I'll just type it all on here and uh, send it over to you via email. So I'll just start your form up. So your full name. and your address. That's... And your postcode. Great. Best contact number for you? Number one, right? Ah, dot com. Lovely. The number in the party. I think it's 14, right? Seven girls, seven boys. Uh, no children, right? Okay, 14. Date of stay. Uh, dietary requirements. Okay. If you need more time to find out from the other guys, then just let me know as soon as you can. It's it's as okay. It's it's rather flexible. Just as long as we know a few days before we order to arrive. Uh, medical, medical requirements that you might have. Sure. Okay. If you don't know all the details, just let me know ASAP. Okay. Great. Uh, now, which suite are you going to go for? Actually, on this occasion, since you've got so many of you and in these rather special circumstances, I think we can probably allow you to choose two. Uh, do you think the boys and girls want to separate? <laughs> okay, let's go wild. Let's separate. Let's separate. So, what do you think the boys will want? Okay, Tudor, fantasy. A uh, fantasy. <laughs> okay, fantasy. Let's give the boys some fantasy. Right. And the girls? And the layout. Two doubles, right? Two doubles in fantasy. And three singles. Three singles, three singles, three singles, three singles. Lovely, 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 lovely. And the same with the Victoria. Okay. Two doubles, three singles. I guess you've got some couples, right? Now, the meals. Would you like me to book you some meals in the dining hall? You're also perfectly welcome to dine as you wish in the main restaurant. Oh. Friday night. Friday night, you'll sort yourselves out, right? Okay. You've got a night planned at the tavern. <laughs> Excellent. Great idea. Saturday night. Saturday night in the dining hall. Perfect, perfect. Excellent. I'll send you the menu via email and the post when this is all done. And Sunday lunch, great choice, great choice. So I guess Sunday lunch. So I guess you'll use the restaurant for all the other times, right? Perfect. Oh, there's also a little store near the reception area that's twenty-four hours a day. Uh, you can pick up newspapers, magazines, batteries, mints, gum. That sort of thing. Now then, activities. What would you want to do with your weekend activities? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Ah, uh, lovely. Yes, 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 that sounds like a great combination. Okay, so you arrive on Friday afternoon.
there, and you can have a little stroll. Little stroll around. Find your bearings, right? And then meal in the restaurant. Then down to the tavern. Great. Sounds great. What about Saturday? Good idea. I imagine a relaxing guided tour would be just the ticket after your hard work on Friday night, right? <laughs> okay. That's marvellous. Marvellous. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Then a split up. Okay, so half of you on the horses, yeah. And the others on the rowing boats. You can get back to me about the exact splits when you hear back from the others, right? And chill out time. Great stuff. Our rooms are very good for that. And I'm sure some rest will be just the ticket. Then the next official thing is the booked meal in the dining hall. Fabulous, fabulous. Okay. Booked meal. And ah, oh, the nighttime tour. Great. I'm jealous. <laughs> How about Sunday? Uh-huh. Yeah. Lazy Sunday. Sunday lunch. It'll be a sumptuous roast, I imagine. Hope that's okay. Right. <laughs> so, afternoon dedicated to photos and chilling out. Perfect. That's great. And then you'll head back home late afternoon. Wonderful. Wow. This all sounds wonderful. All sounds wonderful. Just let me finish that up. I'm so excited for you all. And when's the wedding? Well, I've just got to type a couple more things up for my reference, but I'll send this over to you via email and via post, and that will mention the costs of everything and the rather more boring details, I'm afraid. Money sucks, right? about done. Well, great, lovely. Thanks so much for coming in. And um, this will be sent to you, to your email address that you provided to me. I hope that you have a wonderful time when you come to visit. I I might be there, um, depends where I'm being sent off to next. Uh, sometimes I get a little treat and I'm allowed to come to the castle for my own sort of rest and recuperation, but um, if I don't see you, have a wonderful time. I'm sure it'd be absolutely lovely, and do take care, and thanks for coming to see me.